Welcome back to Tea Talk with Rochelle Gordon from Bliss Tea and Treats. Some people ask, why did you open a tea room? And what exactly is a tea room? So today I want to talk about that. I want to talk about why tea rooms even existed and why I chose to open a tea room myself. So let's go back to the 1900s. Back in the early 1900s, you can probably imagine that women did not have the lives that they have today. So women were not able to dine publicly without a man. If you were married and you went to a restaurant, you had to be accompanied by your husband. If you were a single woman, you could not dine by yourself. So in the early 1900s, women would open up their homes and they would set up a room in their home. And that was a way for them to either supplement their income. If they were married, they would use that money to supplement their income um, for their family. Otherwise, if they were a single woman or a teacher, they would use that as a way to continue to work, for example, throughout the summer um, when they were off. So that was a career option for women. And they would just create lighter meals. Um, Usually it was meals, you know, in between lunch and dinner. Um, Usually that's what high tea represents. High tea is one of those interesting meals where it's, it's kind of a good excuse to be snacky, right? It's a good way to have like a charcuterie type experience um, in the middle of the day and you could call that high tea so the difference between a high tea and an afternoon tea is a high tea would actually be more heavier um, meats and cheeses and so forth Um, and I would actually think that that's actually where charcuterie comes from whereas afternoon tea was more sandwiches The reason why we call our experience high tea as opposed to afternoon tea is because we thought it was actually confusing for people to call it afternoon tea because then they would assume that they could only have it in the afternoon, whereas we serve high tea throughout the day. That's why we call it high tea. And that is the reason why in the tea rooms they would serve high tea is because it really was kind of that in-between meal. So back to the reason why the tea rooms came about. So the women would be able to dine comfortably. It was always a very cozy environment, usually in the home. Men actually started taking notice and wanted to also experience them. So then the men would go and want to dine in the uh, tea rooms. What I find quite interesting is that the concept of creating a cozy, homey-like environment in a restaurant space actually came from those original tea rooms. You know, having candles, having, you know, the the doilies and and the, the coziness of what you find in a home wasn't traditionally done in a restaurant So that is something that the tea room has contributed to the industry. Um, Another thing to consider is that alcohol normally was not served in the tea room. So it actually created an alternative to alcohol and bars. A lot of places where alcohol was served, women didn't really feel comfortable back then. So this was an opportunity for them to be in an environment where there was no alcohol being served. The decor was traditionally Victorian, China. That was traditionally the style for the traditional tea room. I chose specifically to go the complete opposite direction, intentionally not wanting to go with Victorian as my tea room decoration I really wanted to have the experience be approachable I wanted everyone not just women I wanted men I wanted boys 
kids. I wanted everyone to feel like they could come into the space and belong there. And believe it or not, even though we have worked really hard to make it approachable some people still walk in and think it's a little too fancy because we do do themes and sometimes we're dressed up or sometimes it's um, a little bit more decorated than other times so people still walk in and feel like it's a lot but I think for the most part you will find that in the bliss tea room a lot of diversity happens in the space because everyone can walk in and feel like they can have a seat on the couch and be at home. So that was the very intention of what we did when we decorated the space. Another thing, the food. So the food that was traditionally served in the tea room is not the food that I wanted to serve. So I've been to many, many tea rooms around the world. And one of the things that I often disliked was the food. I would go places, I would have the sandwiches, I would sometimes, you know, have the desserts, the scones, and I always felt like it wasn't my favorite thing. I enjoyed the experience, but the food wasn't always my favorite thing. So I spent a lot of time looking at the food options and coming up with food that was a bit more artisanal. Um, It felt a little bit more modern, cozy, um, homemade. So, for example, we never serve cold sandwiches. We never serve cold sandwiches. And that was something that was important to me because I did not like either cold bread or bread that felt um, stale. So that was something that we spent a lot of time thinking about, thinking about how can we serve sandwiches where the bread always feels fresh, right? And the, the, the sandwich options always feel unique and different. So for example, our prosciutto fig and feta. We've taken that prosciutto fig and feta sandwich through very different iterations. We've gone from having it be a sandwich to having it be an open face on a French bread. And then we've also taken it to where we've made uh, focaccia and put in on that. So there are iterations that we've taken some of the sandwiches through so that it continues to evolve and get better. Especially when it's something that we love. When we truly love it, And we know that it's not its absolute best. So I think with the focaccia, um, that has really taken that prosciutto fig and feta to the next level. It has met um, its peak in terms of where it's supposed to be. So we're really excited about that. So we try to do that. And then when we introduce new sandwiches or new savories based based on the theme that we're doing, we really try to introduce things that are really going to complement everything that's on the menu. So with the food, we try to balance the sandwiches and the savories with the dessert selection, as well as with the scones. Um, Those are the three tiers that we focus on. We always have three sandwiches that are served. Those are personalized and selected. The desserts, those are selected by the house. Um, Some of them are standard, like the bread pudding. That's something that we always make and we always serve. Um, And then based on the season and the theme, we determine what the other two desserts are going to be. And then with the scone, our scones are very specific to Bliss. So we have a cranberry orange a chocolate chip and now we have a vegan experience so we have a vegan scone and quite frankly I'm so absolutely excited about that vegan scone we've taken it through a couple iterations the first scone I wasn't really that excited about it but now we found a recipe that truly is lovely and we bake it to order so it's nice and warm and fresh and flaky when it's served so we're really excited about our vegan experience 
And then another thing that is quite interesting about the original tea rooms is that they, they didn't always serve tea. Um, they weren't necessarily in a culture, a tea culture here in this country. So they weren't necessarily serving good tea. And even though they may have tea available, it wasn't as expansive as the tea selections are today. So today in the Bliss Tea Room, we have over 40 uh, selections that you can choose from. Other tea rooms even have more than that. What I found though, as I was going to different tea rooms across the world, a lot of times the tea experience wasn't optimal. It was sometimes an afterthought. So for example, the tea wasn't the right temperature. It didn't stay warm throughout the entire experience. So those were things that I kept in mind as I was creating the experience of Bliss and really wanted to make sure that when we serve tea, that we truly are very intentional about the tea experience, making sure that people are choosing a tea that resonates with them, with our sensory tubes, and then they are seeing the evolution of the tea as it's brewing in their pot. So that those were things that were very important to us. In the 1950s, most of the tea rooms started to close, but I think we are starting to see a resurgence of tea rooms coming back. The big hotels are not necessarily doing high tea as much, but there are some tea rooms still in existence and we do believe that it's a culture that's important it's a great way for people to come together and we really want to be an essential part of the community by having that opportunity for people to slow down relax and really enjoy a nice cup of tea high tea experience and if they've never had high tea to experience it for the first time with us So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to talk with you soon and have a wonderful week.